It's called ghost stopping. It will all of a sudden on, on the highway start breaking very hard and there will be no car in front of you, behind you, it would just break. Hi, I'm Dave from ImagineAutos.com. Today we're gonna do a long-term review of a 2015 Tesla. We're gonna be interviewing the owner of this specific Tesla to find out what it's like to own this car long-term. A lot of reviews you find online is about how awesome this car is, all the features, but what happens if you had this car for at least four to five years? Let's find out and interview Phil. Please come on in. He's the owner of this Tesla. So Phil, uh, let us know the make and model of this uh, Tesla. Hi everyone, I'm Phil. Uh, this is a 2015 Tesla Model S 85D. When I bought the car, it had around 39,000 miles on it. In 2018 is when I bought the car. And so I bought it used, I bought it directly from Tesla. Fair to say it was a pretty uh, good experience. Ever since I bought the car, the only thing I've done with the car is get new tires. The car currently has about 85,000 miles on it. It's been virtually maintenance free. Overall, I'm very happy with my ownership. The thing is that after owning a car for so long, there must be some experiences that you just don't have unless you're a long-term owner. So what are some of the pros and cons of, of owning this for, for, for five years? My overall experience with the car has been very, very positive. Obviously, there are some gripes that I'm gonna go over with you, some, some minor issues. One, for example, is the, the paint on this car is not the best, right? So it, it chips very easily. The front of the car, I got multiple uh, paint chips and uh, I had to buy a paint touch-up from Tesla to touch up some of the chips. So I had to do that. So they recommend you charge it to 90%, not 100% when you charge it on a daily basis. And when I first bought the car, it, it would charge you 240 miles at 90%. At 100%, it would charge you to a 265 brand new. Since I've owned it, the battery de degradation has actually been pretty good. So now it charges to 230 miles at 90%. So I've lost about 10 miles since the four years I've owned it. Um, and I put about you know 40,000 miles on the car. I'm actually surprised by that. I thought it would be worse. So this is after about four or five years of uh, constant use of that battery. Correct. How about charging speed? Has that changed? the battery degradation? Have you noticed it doesn't charge as fast? Uh, no, I mean, uh, so you definitely want to install a 240 volt ch uh, charger at home because you can charge it using a, a, a 110 volt, but it will take you forever to get a full charge. It basically gives you three miles every hour of charge. And if you want to charge it fully, it will take you like three days. So if you do a 240 volt, it will get you about uh, 20 miles every hour. So overnight, about eight hours of charging, it will be full. So the charging speed is not a, an issue. Here's the other huge benefit, by the way, any car that Tesla sold prior to 2017, they give you supercharging for free and it's transferable to the new owner. So I, I'm benefiting from that. So when I go to a supercharging station, I can charge my car for free. Wait, so, yeah. so is this lifetime of the car? Lifetime for the car. Wow, yeah. okay, I didn't know that at all about it getting a used Tesla. Yeah, absolutely. And they have upgraded the superchargers now. So you can charge the car, uh, you can add 100 miles to the car within like 15 minutes. What's really cool about this car is you put it on, on the navigation system where you want to go. And if there's, you don't have enough charge, it will calculate in the superchargers on the way for you and tell you how long you have to stay there for and it will calculate that time in so that you'll, you'll know exactly what time you're gonna get to your destination that includes the charging time. I mean, that sounds great, but have you done any long-term trips, like long road trips where you've had uh, any issues with finding chargers or getting the car charged or waiting a long time? Have you any experience with, the, with that experience? Because that's a, what a lot of people worry about when they're getting an EV. That's a very good question. And right now, if I were to get another EV, I would get another Tesla. And the reason for that is their charging network. Their charging network is second to none. There, there are superchargers virtually everywhere. And only Tesla cars can charge at uh, these supercharging stations. The furthest I've been is I've, I've done a road trip from, um, from Connecticut to uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I mean, I have no issues finding uh, supercharging stations virtually uh, you know, uh, they have it at malls, at uh, rest stops. They tell you exactly how many spots are available. So when you get there, you know that there's a spot for you, pull in and, and charge. And I uh, usually just go and get a cup of coffee or 
let's, let's play some games. I actually have a lot of games in the car. You can play games while you're waiting for about 15, 20 minutes to get about 100 to 150 miles charged and you're on your way. So it's great. With that kind of road trip though, how confident are you then with your experience so far to drive this car across the country from New York to California? You feel confident in that road trip with then? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. I, I, I think I'm not sure the exact number uh, of supercharging stations that Tesla has, but it's in the thousands. I am uh, very confident that I can make it across the country without any issues because of the charging network that Tesla has. So with other EVs, you know, you have to rely on some of the other charge point charging networks and, and the, the ones that are available. And what I've seen is a lot of them are, there's not a lot of them out there. There's only like two or three stalls available. And a lot of times you see them being broken and not working as opposed to the supercharging stations that Tesla offers. That sounds great, but it is the middle of summer here and it's getting pretty hot. Let's take advantage of the, uh, of the air conditioning in the Tesla and let's move the uh, interview inside. Sounds good. Oh, it feels so good in here. I'm glad that like, you can just keep the air conditioning on. So this feels great right now. <laughs> Owning a Tesla long-term though, you must have had an accident at some point. Did you have any accidents with this car? Was it big, small, like what happened? Yeah, I actually did have an accident. I was on the highway minding my, my own business and all of a sudden a car just sideswiped me and took out the driver's side mirror and dented the, the whole side of the car. And so it, it caused, it essentially took out the whole mirror, it caused some, 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 some damage um, wow. on the side. I know that the newer Teslas can have the uh, dash, that the cameras that's all around the car to record that. Um, does a 2015 model able to do that? Did you get any footage of this accident? Yeah, unfortunately, no. The 2015 model does not have the sentry mode um, or the, the, the recording uh, of the surroundings uh, at all times. So I did not, I mean, I wish uh, I was able to, to record. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's something good to know that uh, for anyone interested in a used Tesla. Um, I don't know what year that you can start having sentry mode and recording the dash cams, but it seems like one of the older Teslas, you can have that, which, you know, would have been beneficial in this case. Yeah, so when I had um, the car repaired or the repair experience wasn't, uh, was actually pretty good. So, so I contacted the, the insurance company and they apparently have the body shops for Tesla. So, so I was recommended to one and uh, they did a fairly good job. I mean, the car has been completely restored. It was a fairly expensive repair, however. It was uh, around $5,000. If I didn't have insurance, that's how much it would have cost oh, me. Oh, okay. And then most, of, most of it probably went into the motorized mirror because that mirror, it was probably very expensive to replace. Pretty expensive, but they did a great job. I didn't even know actually that there was an accident on that part of the car. It, yeah. I didn't notice anything. Exactly. I mean, it looks as if it's brand new, nothing has happened. And unless you check the car factory, you probably don't even know that, that something happened to it. Now, the repair for the outer body is great, but is there any internal damage? I hear that Teslas are built so well that, you know, when you get into accidents, they're pretty sturdy. So how about the internals? Yeah, I mean, it, the damage wasn't, it wasn't like a head-on collision or anything. So there wasn't really any chassis damage. Uh, it was just more uh, the, side, the side panel, the front driver's side panel, as well as the driver's side door was dented in and, and they had to kind of replace the body there, but there's no structural damage to the car. You know, a Tesla is a really heavy car, right? And you, uh, you don't even have the max battery size, right? Which will make it even heavier. How does that affect the wear and tear of the tires long term? Like, are there any special tires you have to get? Like, how's that experience? When I first bought the car, the only thing I replaced was, was the tires. It's been about 40,000 miles now. The tires um, are due for replacement. The fact that the car is so heavy, it does wear the tire out, but getting 40,000 miles off the tires, to me, I, it's, I didn't even expect that to happen. I, I thought I had to replace the tires at around 25,000, but getting 40,000, I'm, I'm actually very pleased. The tires I got are the Continental tires, which um, are highly recommended on uh, tire rack. Actually, I remember in our conversation earlier, you had a recall for this car. What was that about? Yeah, so there is a recall on this car on the display. There is a memory card essentially that stores uh, all the settings for your for this big screen right here. Uh, apparently, there was a defect in the manufacturing where after about a thousand saves, it starts to get really, really sluggish and eventually the screen won't even work anymore. So that's what the recall is. 
And I've had this recall leather for about two years now and I haven't been able to get it replaced. Fortunately, my car is still working okay. My display is working fine. But due to this chip shortage, they uh, have not been able to schedule me in for replacement yet. So have you experienced any time when you're using the vehicle that uh, the screen slows down or doesn't work that really causes a, a, a bad experience? So it, it is slowing down. I do notice it uh, a little bit. So I am a little bit concerned but they say that unless it is completely like makes your screen blank you should still be able to use it so okay. so far it hasn't happened to me yet that's good because basically <laughs> everything in a tesla is on that screen so exactly. <laughs> it'll be horrible if that thing stopped working uh, the other thing that i really like about teslas is the over the air updates i actually just got an over the air update uh, a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and they really change the ui completely you know i mean i'm still get, trying to get used to the, the the whole new ui the whole interface but over the years they've added like dog mode so if you have a car a dog in your car you can set up dog mode and the ac will be running and there will be a big sign on the screen that says don't worry my owner has the ac on and i'm comfortable so that when someone walks by and they see a dog in there and it's 90 degrees outside they're not going to be worried that the dog's <laughs> It's gonna, you know, suffocate from uh, from heat. So over the years, they've added a lot of really cool stuff, and I really like that. But there was a recent update, however, like just uh, maybe early this year, mm. that started to cause a problem with the autopilot. It's called ghost stopping. So when you have the autopilot on, it will just all of a sudden on on the highway start braking very hard, and it really jolts you and and gets you like really nervous about what the heck's going on and there would be no car in front of you behind you it would just all, all of a sudden break and i freak out so i disengage the the autopilot so i don't know if it would fully stop or not uh, i didn't i didn't allow it to, to go to that point because i would probably have caused an accident so hopefully this new latest update that i have is going to resolve that issue because i think it was due to an uh, over air update to the autopilot component that caused this issue because i didn't have this problem you know two three years ago and all of a sudden i started having it that, i mean that is kind of scary because the software update sounds great um but anyone experienced this on your phone or on your computer sometimes updates break things or introduces new bugs and that sounds really scary because your car would normal at first and then all of a sudden something changed and now something scary can happen absolutely yeah i mean the over the air updates i actually i mean i i'm a huge proponent of it it's almost like having a phone on the, on your car and it, you, you get new features all the time and i really love that but they definitely need to do some thorough testing before they release these updates but what i'm actually glad is that if there's issue like this and people complain about it they can actually fix it and then give you a new update to get rid of that issue. You know, hopefully this new update that they, they've just released um, will have fixed that issue. Sounds like overall, you really like the experience of owning this Tesla over the last four or five years. Um, there's a little hiccups here and there that <laughs> update sound a little scary, but what else do you want to say about the, the long-term experience of owning uh, a Tesla? Yeah, actually, so one thing I forgot to mention is uh, how, how much has my electric bill gone up, right? And uh, it's gone up about you know, 50 to $60 a month charging the car at home. So that is a huge savings compared to, you know, with, with the gas prices being so high now. This car has been virtually maintenance free. No oil change, no any liquid change or whatever change. There, there is nothing to change here. I mean, it's just battery and the, the electrical components. So the only things that can go wrong is essentially those components. You know, knock on wood so far, this car has been phenomenal. Uh, the batteries are warranted for, for eight years. Um, so uh, by 2023, next year, the battery warranty would, um, would expire. Now, Tesla says within the, the warranty, if your battery degrades to 70% of its original capacity, they will replace it. So in my case, it would have to charge to less than 187 miles, which at this point, I don't see it happening. I'm still getting 230 miles. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy with the ownership of the car. This is pretty exciting for me to learn how, about your long-term experience with the Tesla because I have been thinking about an EV as like a, the next car purchase in the future. And 
sounds like it's worth it in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. In the four years I've had this car, I've saved a ton of money not having to, you know, change the oil or, or, or do anything with the car. Uh, I just charge and I'm ready to go. So uh, every day, I, I love the experience. Thank you, Phil, for this uh, interview to find out what a long-term experience is with a Tesla. You're welcome. And uh, I hope everyone that uh, saw this video, if you ever wonder if owning a Tesla is worth it in the long term, here is uh, one experience of uh, Phil's ownership that maybe help you make a decision for uh, a Tesla in the future. All right, we'll see you next time uh, here on Imagine Auto. So don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.